A while ago, I asked you guys based off my videos, which sister I was from Charmed. A lot of you got it right when you said Piper and those of you that pick Phoebe. As soon as we find out who you are, trust you will. Ever loves TV. Yes, I made a theme song so that I can talk about all my favorite shows. Oh yeah. And this is just your disclaimer that this is not me talking about any of the actors themselves, but more so their characters. Please do not attack me in the comments. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion, even those who disagree with me, but let's keep it friendly. All right, let's get started with the show. So this video has been one of my highly requested videos for a long time and I kept intending to talk about it during spooky season because it seemed fitting but obviously now I've realized between all the episodes they have for this show there's no way to discuss the entire show or break down multiple episodes the way I do only in spooky season. Growing up I loved anything witchy or most shows that involved people having powers. Wizards of Waverly Place, Halloween Town, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Harry Potter, Sailor Moon, all of it. Today we're talking about episodes one through five of Charmed season one. So in case you don't already know, Charmed is a show that aired October 7th, 1998. The stories surrounding three special witch sisters called the Charmed Ones and their stories navigating both their powers and their personal lives in San Francisco. Season one includes Shannon Doherty who plays Prue Hallowell, Holly Marie Combs who plays Piper, and Alyssa Milano who plays Phoebe. Prue is 27 and works at a museum, Piper is 25 and works at a restaurant, and Phoebe is 22 and unemployed. The show was on for nine years and ended in 2006 with eight seasons, so there's tons to talk about. Let's start with season one. In episode one, three women discuss they have powers after their grandmother dies. When they discover their powers, it reminds me of like in H2O, the way that Ricky, the most rebellious, discovers her powers last too. Early on, you could see the tension between Phoebe and Prue. Prue thinks Phoebe slept with her ex. Then Phoebe moves back in with Piper and Prue. Why does Prue always remind me of Miley Cyrus or Courtney Cox? Like if they just blended together? <laughs> Just casually playing with an Ouija board during a storm, no big deal. Someone is watching the Hollywood house from outside. At Prue's job, her boss says something disrespectful to her and his pen shoots ink in his face. Then at Piper's job, just before her boss, Chef Moore, can try the food that she was preparing, he freezes. Then Prue quits her job and her boss's tie becomes too tight when she walks away. While biking home, Phoebe starts getting visions of the future where two guys almost get hit by a car. Prue goes to the hospital and grabs a cup of coffee with Andrew, a detective from her past. I'm sorry, I don't care how much I like someone, I'm never following them anywhere in the dark. Piper's boyfriend Jeremy is secretly a warlock and using the power of three, the girls defeat him. Then Andrew stops by and invites Prue to dinner, but Prue asks to just call Andy instead. I don't know why that's like one of my favorite lines in TV when they be like, I'll call you like in older shows. I don't know why that like makes me, it's just one of those little things like one of those little tropes or whatever that I just like. In episode two, someone is abducting women. Prue is sleeping with Andy and Piper's boss quits. So she's trying to run a restaurant by herself. In this episode, you can see Piper struggling with becoming a witch and whether it means that she can still be a good person. Piper attempts to drop something off at the church and refuses to go inside in fear of possibly burning alive. I'm watching this episode and I keep forgetting just how 90s the show is with the way that it truly reflects the way tangoing is viewed. The topic of tangoing is still scandalous. Sex in the City only aired for the first time three months before this came out. So first the world was rocked by Sex in the City challenging the ideas of how women discuss it in society. Then out comes a show about witches who have dating lives. I'm actually interested to hear how this was perceived at the time. I'm sorry but the first woman on the table sounded like an anime character and it made me laugh. Phoebe uses her powers to help someone win the lottery and even plays it herself which causes Phoebe and Prue to start bickering because Prue wants to control how Phoebe uses her powers despite her also using hers. Piper freezes everything and everyone in the kitchen at her job and tells her sister that she hates being a witch. Prue and Andy talk and she asks him to give her some time to think things through. Amy Duncan from Good Luck Charlie's in this episode and Prue gets hired at a new job. Phoebe is captured then Prue and Piper discover that a warlock Javna is after them and has attacked a young woman named Brittany turning her into an old woman. The charm ones use an incantation to banish him and Brittany turns back into a young woman. In episode three Prue goes home after a party and is met with a Rottweiler. They have such sibling energy and I love it. The girl's dad ambushes Prue at work and me personally, I think Prue is right to tread lightly and it's very telling when he can't even guess Phoebe's name. Prue later tells Andy, who's not really Andy, that their dad hasn't been in their lives for over 20 years. So if you do that math, it means that he walked out basically around the time Prue was like seven years old. Someone is trying to steal the Book of Shadows, but the book won't go out of the house, so they shape shift into Andy. They have dinner with their dad and he trips the waiter on purpose to like expose that the girls have their powers. A team of shape shifters are working together to try and steal the Book of Shadows in hopes of getting their powers. The girl's dad admits that he came back into town only to try to get the Book of Shadows. He claims he wants to keep them safe, which is such baloney. 
Speaking of baloney, why is it spelled like that? It's then revealed that their dad is working with a team of shapeshifters. Phoebe touches her dad and gets a vision about the shapeshifters. I don't know why, but when all of them just kept popping out of nowhere, it was weird. Also, she memorized that spell so quickly, I would have, I would have sucked at that. Like, I would have had to run back upstairs and check. Everybody would have been dead. Like, it just would have been so unfortunate. The charm ones defeat them, and the girl's dad cancels on dinner with them and leaves town. They sit around looking at home movies of them as kids with their dad, and to be honest, it's kind of sad. In episode four. Andy and Prue are going away together for the weekend for the first time to go enjoy a spa. Piper and Phoebe are planning Prue a surprise party. Mark, a man who was unalived, meets Piper asking her for help from Yama who's after his spirit. Prue catches Andy having dinner with his ex-wife. I think it goes without saying that Prue was totally right. He lied and he never should have went without telling her that he was married for that long. Phoebe's trying to warn a man at her job that he's going to die. Right when Piper and Mark are finna lip lock, Piper is kidnapped. The girls defeat Mark's unaliver and Mark goes off into the sunset with his dad. The strangest thing about this episode so for me was not even the ghost it was the fact that like they came back from a funeral and had a surprise party just waiting at the house in episode five the episode begins with the girls being out to eat and a guy sends over a drink to prove she sends it back because she's with andy duh and the guy ends up in the waitress's dreams later so to start off the dream scene with faux joe swanson the dream lord was so strange then the creepy dream guy unalives the waitress phoebe wants to cast a spell to catch a man piper is so me it's strange after all these years still relating to her the most then during prue's sensual bath of solitude so i'm watching this bathtub scene and i'm thinking why is she in a towel in the tub like i get it but i don't why like i'm trying to focus on the dream creep and all i see is the fact that she has a towel on in the tub prue not being able to move was triggering for me and anyone else who's already had sleep paralysis dream weirdo tries to drown prue in the tub prue looks in the mirror and sees that the scratches that she got in the dream are there in real life i don't understand why piper jumped straight to prue being paranoid or that she imagined him when they're literally witches because me i will be trying to get to the nitty gritty asap but that's just me, your friendly neighborhood muggle. Meanwhile, Phoebe is enjoying the fruits of her labor and I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. It's kind of like when Timmy makes a wish, you're just patiently waiting for him to say, I wish everything would go back to normal. Dream creep is so unbelievable when he's talking to the detectives. He sounds stoned. He's all like, what? Another murder exactly like my GS? What? How tragic. What? And they're like, dude, do you got an alibi? And he's like, right on, detective. Surely do. What? I feel like any moment now, he was gonna ask if one of them wanted to light up. Suddenly, Dream Matthew McConaughey is harassing Prue again, threatening to unalive her when she falls asleep at work. And the music in the background, let's just cut that, because it's not really helping the vibes. I don't know what the vibe's supposed to be like. I'm like halfway in and I'm like, I'm, I'm like scared, but like it's sensual, and like I'm scared, but like it's sensual, and it's like, those are not two things I really want to like put together for some reason. With Prue falling asleep while driving and Hasselhoff bursting through the door, we're forced to hear another segment of Dream Creep, the musical. Prue crashes her car after falling asleep while driving and gets wheeled into the hospital. Phoebe and Piper rush to the hospital. You know what's wild about this episode though? It just goes to show how long men have been violent to women and how long the male ego has been a threat. By the end of the episode, Prue defeats Dream Creep and all is right in San Francisco again. I won't lie, getting through season one of this has been the hardest part of starting to talk about this show because the first season of most shows are just kind of awkward and uncomfortable. I don't know if anybody else relates to that. Especially when you know how the shows look by the end, it's hard to see your favorite show in season one where the characters like don't have their signature looks yet. The set is shot from weird angles that production ditches later on for whatever reason. Especially with Charmed, in season one, the theme song isn't even the theme song I'm used to. But nonetheless, I'm ready to see where this series takes us and what conversations it'll lead us to having. Let me know in the comments if you think I should continue this and we'll see what happens. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hold on, before y'all go, listen to this mess. I'm about to let y'all hear this recording because I was trying to record this video and I just wanted y'all to hear the foolishness. Here, take a look. Early on, you can discover the tension. Early on, you could see the tension between Phoebe and Prue. Oh, just casually playing with the Ouija board during a snowstorm. Wait. Oh, just casually playing with the Ouija board doing a. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, just casually playing with the Ouija board doing a. Do, doing. Oh my God, am I my baby? Someone. Someone, oh my god. Someone is watching the Hollywood house. Blah. Piper's boyfriend, Jerry, Jerry. She stuck with Piper a trim. Mm. Phoebe and Prue are bigger, which is causes, which causes Phoebe and Prue to, ugh. Amy Duncan from, Ch Amy Duncan from Good Luck Charlie is in this episode and Prue gets hired at a new job. No. Amy Duncan and Prue gets hired at a, mm. Then Prue and Piper discover that a war, mm. Prue later tells mm. a team of shape, sh a team, oh my god. A team of shape, ugh. A team of shape shifters. Oh my god, this is like crazy. A team of shape. A team of shape. Oh my god, why can't I say this? A team of. 
up. Why do I keep saying up? A team of shape shifters. He claims he wants to keep them safe and blah, blah, blah. Phoebe touches her dad and gets a vision about the shape shift. Oh my God, the shape shifters. 